Mr. Chairman, um, certainly want to make these announcements again. <clears throat> We're at uh, the 27th of February. Tomorrow is the 28th. The day following is the 1st of March. And that is the last day that any citizen in the town who owns property, property residential property or, or commercial property, uh, can file for a tax abatement uh, on their assessments with the assessor's office. Uh, if you do not file by March 1st, you are precluded by statute from filing for any taxes for the previous calendar year, forever. Uh, so it's important that if you have a situation where you, you wish to challenge your tax taxes, that you do that by March 1st. Forms are available in the assessor's office. Also, by April 15th, that's the last day that property owners may file for elderly, veterans, blind, solar, and other exemptions that are allowed by statute. And also on the 15th is the last day that charitable organizations must file their property inventory forms. April 15th is also the last day for the application for current use taxation, and it's the last day to file for the Hampton Beach Precinct Tax Abatement. For those who wish to file for any of the items listed above, please come to the assessor's office early as the forms you need to be uh, they need to be filled out and filed with your request along with the necessary backup documents to verify your eligibility for the exemption. And all that has to be done before the deadline dates. The supervisor of the checklist will be in session in the Hampton Town office on Tuesday, March 7th, 2017 from 1 to 2 p.m. to register new voters and to make changes and corrections to the voter checklist. Uh, when registering to vote, residents must provide a photo ID and proof of age, domicile, and citizenship. For naturalized citizens, not naturalized papers are required, or naturalization papers are required, excuse me. Residents may also register to vote and make corrected corrections and changes to their voter information at the town clerk's office during normal business hours until that time. No new registrations will be accepted between March 7th and March 14th, which is election day by state law. Mr. Chairman, there are a couple of other things. Um, that the board needs to be made aware of. Uh, we've received a notice from Merrimack, uh, Merrimack, Rockingham County uh, Commissioners. <coughs> they are considering changing the fiscal year for the county taxes, uh, which means that at some point in time, we're going to receive three tax bills in a year. Uh, they've got this pretty well scheduled so that it's not going to affect anything on our tax rate. Uh, but it will change the amount of cash that we collect and hold uh, during the course of the year, which could, in fact, increase the amount of money we borrow, uh, have to borrow in lieu of taxes. Um, just so people understand the process, we bill twice a year. The first half tax bill comes in the spring, usually due by July 1st. Uh, that's the last day it should be due. Uh, and that is one half of the previous year's tax. And then the state sets the tax rate per thousand in the fall, and we bill again usually in October or November, and that's usually due December 1st. We're on one fiscal year, and the school is on another fiscal year. So we collect six months of the worth of their taxes to pay to them from January through June, through the end of June. We hold that money. It's paid, paid by the taxpayers. We hold that money, and we actually revolve that in the town's checking account so we don't have to borrow. That goes with the county as well. If the county changes the fiscal year, that money will not be held in the account, and it may result in some borrowing by the town and to pay taxes and pay our bills during the course of the year. So everybody should keep an eye on what's going on with the county taxes, uh, just in case uh, you know, we, we end up having to borrow funds in the future because we may not have cash available as is normally done during the course of the year. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I signed a letter for the Pease Authority uh, for the, the harbor. We had discussed this briefly, and I'd given you some information on it. The harbor is badly silted in. Uh, the, the Pease International Authority, the Ports and Harbors Division, has requested that the Corps of Engineers dredge the harbor again. 
The last dredging was in 2012-13, and they took out 168,000 cubic yards of, of material out of the out of the uh, harbor at the cost of 3.2 million dollars. The United States Army Corps of Engineers has indicated that they have no time scheduled in the future and no cash available in the future to dredge the harbor. Uh, it is already uh, closing down for the commercial fishing vessels, and we're afraid it's going to be closing down for the private vessels as well in the summertime because it's filling rapidly. I think if you look over in the uh, just about where the town line is with Seabrook, uh, which is called the middle ground, uh, you'll see that's already starting to be chewed in half again by the uh, the water coming down from Salisbury and the river. So we're having some severe problems out there. I did sign a letter asking Senator uh, Shaheen to assist us in getting funds to help dredge the harbor so that we can keep, and the, the harbor authority, it's, it's, I think they're a little low, but they indi indicated the, the financial impact and losses would be $91 million per year, including, including certainly including wages. Uh, it would also have damage to our fireboat and the police boats and the Coast Guard vessels and, and the state vessels that, that frequent that area. We would also received a, a note uh, from several people as well as the state who was very concerned about the fact that the Sun Valley shoreline, uh, particularly around the bridge across the harbor, is eroding, eroding very quickly. Um, there's 110 linear feet of, of displacement um, and 85 linear feet of displacement for the jetty uh, on the south side of the river, uh, which is causing some severe problems and is probably going to have to be corrected. Just so everybody knows, I know there's a a general concept that that jetty, the low tide jetty, is a town's. It is not. It belongs to the state of New Hampshire. I've seen the information from the Army Corps of Engineers that when it was built, it was turned over by the Army to the state. So they have maintenance responsibilities there. And that is uh, that is causing some problems with the erosion that's going on down there now. Um, and that has something to do with the displacement of the jetty because it has been moved slightly. The other thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is is we have a young lady who is uh, uh, about to go on maternity leave under the um, FMLA uh, Maternity Leave Act, uh, and with the board's permission, uh, we we've made arrangements to hire two temporary people to come in and fill that position so that we don't have a vacant position in the finance department. Um, but we need permission to exceed the 28 hours per week, but not exceed the 30-hour threshold in federal law. Uh, the board has set a 28-hour uh, threshold. We're going to need to work this person 29 hours in order to make up the time. So uh, we need your permission to do that, sir. That's it. I'm done. Very good. Is there to be a motion for that? Do you want a motion for that? Uh, yes, because I'll you, you did set motion. a policy. Motion by Rick, second, second by Regina. All no, in favor? Just, yes. why, did, why are we hiring two to fill one? We can't get a, well, first of all, we can't work a part-time person more than 28 hours a week to start with. Okay. Okay. So it's a 40-hour position. In order to fill a position, we need two people and not exceed the threshold. Okay. And we'll only be going the 20 hours, uh, 40 hours, I mean? We we'll only be doing 30, 39 hours at the okay. most. Between the two of them. Between the two. Right. So we won't exceed the federal limit of, of 30 with anyone. Okay. All right. And can we just get a more, I, I support the motion, can we get a detailed motion more more detailed than we support that? If you want. I, I would like that. Two, two people All right. replacing the an employee. Motion to, to hire two part-time people. Yes, sir. Uh, the to no temporary. Person work, temporary people uh, during the FMLA absence of one of our employees. Uh, and the, the total number of hours worked by any employee will not exceed 29 hours in a week. And I'll make that motion. I'll second, second it. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> any questions for the town manager, Regina? So on the harbor dredging that you, you have just sent a letter out to Senator Shaheen to see if she is able to get funds in order to have that done. We, uh, we sent a letter in conjunction with the Pease uh, Ports and Harbors Authority, uh, the Eastman Docks, the Yankee Fishermen's Cooperative, the Hampton River Marina, and the town of Seabrook. 
for all users of the harbor. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm set, Jim. Phil, all set. Rick? So, when people get the, um, the discount or, you know, the, what do you call it, the abatement, abatement, abatement yeah. or being, you know, not making, falling within the certain guidelines when they're up to 80 years old. Yes. Do they have to apply for that every year? No, sir, they do not. But there is a provision in the uh, regulations of the Department of Revenue that every five years we have to verify their eligibility again. So we send them a letter. Uh, we check with, to see if they're on the checklist. Let's check to see if they own the property and they're still there. And we do verify that they are still living there once every five years so they continue to be eligible for the exemption. So when their age changes, like let's say one was 79 last mm -hmm. year and they're 80 this year, when does the time, when, when would they? They have to be 80 <coughs> after April 1st. So if they're eight, they're eight, if they're eighty before then, if they're eighty before then, it's automatic. If April first is the date in which all changes are made in real estate taxes, mm -hmm. so they that's the last day. If 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 you turn eighty uh, on April fifteenth, for instance, you got to wait a year. Okay, so you'll know if someone was seventy nine last year that they're oh, yes. going to go into another category when they're eighty. Yes, and we we, we keep track that. of those and we check 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 them every year, uh, and we do track them by age and their birth date. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I went over to the I was down the river yesterday and looking at it, and you really once you had mentioned it to me last week, you get down there and you really notice how much Big difference how much that that bank and the beaten wave on both as you're headed south, both both sides of the road. The, the uh, was one of the things we're worried about there is the fact that we have a uh, we have a submerged force sewer main that runs on the west side of the bridge through the harbor base and up through that, uh, that, that dune area and then up underneath the highway and down into uh, Sun Valley. So we're, very, we're being very cautious about that and keeping a close eye on where that line is. Okay.